black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Welcome to a uh, pile of crispy flats, all flats, just flats, rascal flats, you know what I mean. <laughs> Stupid idiot. Um, and some sauces. So I have a homemade mild. And, you know, take it or leave it, but I've been loving on chicken wings lately just mayo and mustard mixed, triple M styles. But I also have a honey G dunker right here as well. And then we might apply some ranch because I can't have mild sauce wings without some ranch intermingling into them so as you can see we have a beautiful Baja blast here today and before we do anything more we must pop up pour we have the classic shredder super sender <laughs> on the sled and the Baja blast <laughs> so let's crack that oh let's straighten you out crack that before we pour now, you see, I live in the Baja. <laughs> Back when I was the governor of Minnesota. Now, see, I live in the Baja. Back when I was the governor of Minnesota. I had a hundred dogs. Now I spend less than six... <laughs> now I spend less than six months of the year in the continental United States of America. In the Baja. Jesse Ventura. Will Sasso's impression of Jesse Ventura. <laughs> so funny. I can't do that good, obviously. Such a delicious beverage. If you don't know who Will Sasso is, he's a character, uh, an impressionist comedian from the days of mad tv which is was like the rival of snl saturday night live these are those crisp bays extra crisp bays and it was like a skit show i'm just huge into comedians and comedy and uh will sasso is so good at impressions his donald trump is just so many so many good impressions all right Mm. Mm -hmm. It's been a minute since we've had an extra crispy. Dry. Per dip. Road to prediction. <laughs> bar style wing that honey garlic's looking like the amber with the sap that trapped the mosquito turning it to amber and boom dino DNA <laughs> They're turning the frogs gay. <laughs> Alex Jones. Another wild character, wild zany character here on this earth. <laughs> but I say that because referencing Jurassic Park when Dr. Ian says like you know nature will find a way and then it turns out that the frog DNA that they completed the gene sequence filled in the gaps when they were building the dinosaurs or creating the dinosaurs on <laughs> on uh, Jurassic Park where <clears throat> it was frog DNA which It's kind of like hermaphrodite DNA in that they can 
even though you breed it as all female, which is the whole idea of Jurassic Park, was like it's all they're all female, they can't procreate. But the gene expression in that amphibian toad or frog or whatever had the ability to basically immaculately conceive. And so that's how they ended up breeding in the park. Right? <laughs> so they're turning the frogs gay, but the frogs are kind of already <laughs> gay by definition of their uh, standardized DNA, in a sense. There you go. That's what you need. Oh, that's crazy drippy. I suppose that's a uh, perfect segue. <laughs> I didn't mean that to happen. <laughs> and to talk about what happened in my day yesterday. And that is, I visited a geneticist. To submit blood work and go through some general physical testing and like interview type testing because in my family we have a autism it's a gene called Fragile X. So it's a fragile X chromosome, which can mute, like, in the development of the child, it can turn into a, uh, a mutation of the gene and cause autism. And the research on autism is still ongoing. It's, you know, people are finding out in their 20s and 30s and even later. It's a whole segment on TikTok that as research develops with autism, that more people than once previously thought are on the spectrum. And are what the cool kids on TikTok coining as neuro spicy, which is neurodivergent, not neurotypical in your thinking. And all these people on TikTok are like, hey, I'm <laughs> I'm 30 something and I just got diagnosed with high functioning, like high form, high end. Autism. <laughs> and so they're trying to make sense of their lives now. Through that. But anyways. Two men. In my family. Are directly affected by. this fragile X gene and they are, you know, pretty much under the full effect of it. One more so than the other, but they're both affected by it. And my mom carries the gene. In a, at like the 65th percentile or something. So she's always been wanting me to get tested. To see, just even if I carry it. For uh, procreation purposes, right? For if I ever had, had a kid. Or kids, uh. You know, if I could pass it. 
but also to see if maybe that's something that has affected me through my life and we just don't know it. I personally don't think so. She, the, the, the lady I tested with did a bunch of generalized experiments on me and she said it doesn't really there's nothing here to indicate but she said in their research they've learned about this males that can carry a pre-mutation gene meaning that Like you have the gene, but it didn't mutate into, essentially it didn't activate. To the full, to the full effect, but it can like still sort of affect you or something. I couldn't really make complete sense of it, but won't know until the blood test come, but comes back, but that's three or four months away. I did it mainly to appease my mother. Because she's been harping on me to get it done for a long time. So I figured I'd just... get it handled <laughs> so that she can find a little more peace in her life but I mean it'd be interesting to see if my neurochemistry was somehow affected or somehow you know if it was actually a factor in my life that would kind of maybe clear up a few things <laughs> I don't know as to the why I am the way that I am. It does seem, however, all these people on TikTok who like claim to be affected by it are generally people with artistic creative style minds so perhaps there's a connection there and I know for me in my musical writing songs and remembering everything that's ever happened to me in my life, having a steel cage memory and being able to re recite verses and not even write them down. And recite them. Perfectly verbatim with no issue dating back like 15 years I don't know either that's a good memory or that's like a trait of perhaps a certain form of of autism maybe you never know like that's like a a certain level of like a genius type trait where you know so many people don't have good memories at all so that's why I've always been able to convey 
stories in such detail. Is because I can relive it in my head. I can see everything. So I can detail everything. From my memory. She also did a bunch of testing for Tremor. The shaky guy. Me and you guys know I've always been shaky. And uh, she said that's part and parcel of like this one gene is that uh, you develop like tremors. But she said it's usually later in life. But she did observe my tremor. <laughs> she said it's really not that bad. And then she tested my reflexes and coordination. And I was like above average. So in all honesty, she was a little perplexed, but we did talk about uh, how I used to like south, <clears throat> self medicate with drinking, and she said in forms of like high functioning autists, they tend to end up being addicts. Or there's addiction involved in their life. Because of the way that their brain works. They can't seem to find anything else. Medicinally. That helps to like. Soothe them. help with like the, the the thoughts in their in their brain so we talked about that too and I told her how I was having issues with drinking mainly through my young adult life but I also informed her about like my life and how intense it used to be and a lot of the things I had done and accomplished and places I'd worked like multiple jobs and all these people and socializing and partying and it's hard to believe that. <laughs> an autistic person would be able to have done all that, you know? So it's very interesting. I am intrigued to know what the blood work will reveal down the road.
Oh, it comes back positive. <laughs> Won't really change much. I'll just be privy to some information and be able to state that I have a psychiatric condition <laughs> that excludes me from being neuronormative. What that would do to benefit my life, I don't know. <laughs> Probably nothing, but I have a feeling it won't come back positive. I think it'll be probably negative, but we'll see. Anyways, I just love a good crispy wing. Flats are my favorite. I thought I'd tell you guys about that because it is a whole new thing. On t like people are finding this these things out about themselves now as <clears throat> excuse me the research progresses with in in, in these fields. So it's interesting. It's very interesting. So we'll see. I'll let you know in three to four months. <laughs> but we'll have a bunch of other videos between then. Okay. Till the next one. You know what to do. Eat good. Live well. Stay true. <laughs> If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. Thank you for watching. Eat good, live well, and stay true.